get a shiver in the dark. It's been raining in the park, but meantime. With the Sultans of Swing. Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. If you keep coming back for more videos, please consider liking and subscribing and ringing the notifications bell so you don't miss anything. Plus, you can join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month. And starting now, that will give you access to exclusive video content as I am now posting videos of my pen unboxings as I receive them. So you'll get an early preview of upcoming pen reviews along with your cool emojis, stickers, and badges. Today's review is of a pen that I've had for quite a few weeks now, but only recently inked up for review. I was a bit reluctant to review this pen because although I love its style and feel, the only nib available for the pen when I bought it was an extra fine. An extra fine Chinese nib is not exactly the kind of writing experience I look forward to. Sign, please. It's usually like writing with a sewing machine needle, scratchy and thin and horrible. But this Hongdian N6, the first piston filler from Hongdian that I purchased, it has an excellent look and feel. So I inked it up with a new ink to me from J. Urbain called Shogun, and I've been writing with it for a couple of weeks. And to my surprise, the nib, although very much an extra fine, was actually very pleasant. Of course, it was very pleasant after I worked on it for a half an hour or so. I loved writing with the pen so much that I began to be frustrated that the only nibs for this model are extra fine and fine. Then I had an idea that transformed this pen from merely being good to possibly hitting my best of 2022 list this year. Find out what I did to this pen to make it one of my favorite fountain pens right now. I'm guessing the tracking is all over the place. I'm guessing this one is my Hongdian M6, but we'll have to see. So let's open this up. So this is probably the pen. Yep, and here it is in its sleeve. Let's say doesn't say anything on there. Oh, that's interesting. It's a lot lighter than I expected it to be. So with all the glare from my my front light from my camera, I couldn't read that but it does say LT Hongdian on the front and N6 on the back. And it says Hongdian and on the bottom it says EF. Now, I don't remember ordering an EF. Now this is a piston filler. It's a good size, good thickness. And that cap isn't as heavy as you'd expect either. So that'll be an interesting pen to look at. The Hongdian M6. And what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. And I'll also show you what I did to transform this pen from merely good to outstanding. I'll do that during the writing sample, so stay tuned for that. Overall, the pen is a cigar-shaped acrylic-bodied pen with a gold metal cap 
with some vaguely stylized glyphs stamped into the cap. It resembles a few other pens, like this Moonman P135 and this Hongdian 6016. The Moonman P135 is a copy of the Mont Blanc Le Petit Prince, and Hongdian 6016 is a wooden barrel pen. And the N6 is thicker than both pens, but in the same kind of style. The N6 is very attractive with its gold cap and gold piston knob set against the jet black acrylic barrel. Although the N6 is thick, it isn't a long pen. Here it is next to a Pilot Metropolitan, and the Metropolitan is slightly longer than the N6. So not a long pen at all. But it is thick in girth and substantial in the hand at almost 33 grams, yet it's still lighter than both the P135 and the Hongdian 6016. From the top, we see a gold-colored bullet-shaped finial and then a gold band of the clip. The clip is pelican-shaped at the top and then tapers nicely. It is an attractive shape that almost disappears against the cap. It's very springy and very, very usable. The cap has these brush stroke like characters that look more Japanese than Chinese to me, but I'm no languages expert. Perhaps someone who knows what these are can post a comment for me. The cap curves up and then is straight until the integrated raised cap band, which has LT Hongdian on one side and N6, the model number, on the other. Then there is a minuscule step down to the black turned acrylic barrel, which is straight almost to the middle of the barrel, and then it tapers down to the gold-colored metal bullet-shaped piston knob. There's a black enamel paint-filled groove and a plain groove in the top of the piston knob, which gives the illusion of two rings on the knob. When I unscrew the piston slightly here, because it's inked, you can see how the ring is actually on the knob, not the end of the barrel. The cap unscrews with one and about a half turn to reveal an ink window, some gold metal cap threads, a good size tapering black acrylic section with a gold ring at the top towards the number six size nib. The ink window is large and transparent, making viewing ink levels very, very easy indeed. The cap threads are smooth and unobtrusive, and this whole area ends up being like an extended part of the section. It's so smooth. There's a gold metal ring at the top of the barrel which separates it from the ink window and kind of mirrors the ring at the top of the section, which has a groove in the center of it that gives it a similar appearance to the cap threads. Visually, it is all nicely balanced and attractive. And more than attractive, the section is a great size, tapering from 12 millimeters to 11 and millimeters towards the nib. And let's get a closer look at this nib. This is not the nib that came on this pen. So I'll switch over to that nib now. It is on my Wingsong 629 because that's where I stole the nib for the N6 swap. The N6's nib has some very unique engraving on it. The tip is chrome separated by a nice wave from the gold section uh, with an intricate engraving of a Chinese palace structure or I don't know what that is, but it's some kind of Chinese architecture. And then EF and Hongdian. And the feed on the N6 is really interesting. I have to go back to the N6 here. There's the N6. I don't think I've experienced a Chinese pen with an ebonite feed before. I really examined this feed to try to determine if it is indeed ebonite. It certainly has the look and feel of ebonite. I laid it up next to my Leonardo Momento Zero Grande which is an ebonite feed, and they have similar kind of texture to them. But what I'm looking for is not just texture, but if the feed is actually porous, so it actually absorbs ink. And I'm leaning towards the Hongdian being actually ebonite, although I'm willing to be proved wrong. The nib and the feed are not part of a nib assembly, but are friction fit. I did a disassembly video where I took the piston apart and tried but failed to pull the nib and the feed. I'll show that video in a moment, but obviously, I ultimately succeeded in pulling the nib, and I'm glad I persisted. The section does not unscrew. The piston works very well, 
and travels well past the ink window. The inside of the cap shows a black plastic cap liner that seals the nib and keeps it from drying out. The cap posts deeply and securely and makes the pen very compact and very well balanced even with the metal cap. In fact, even better with the metal cap. I was surprised that posted, the N6 is almost as compact as my Schaefer Icon. And get this, my Pilot E95S as well. Look at that. Unposted, the pen is plenty long enough to write with comfortably, although I prefer to post this pen as it adds that extra stability as that cap makes the pen's weight balance perfectly in my hand. I bought this pen from Mary's Stationery Store on AliExpress for $35.91 US with free shipping. Now I'll show you the video I did when I took this pen apart, reassembled it, and then inked it for the first time. After that, we'll look at some size comparisons. So I thought before I inked this pen up, I would uh, show you what I'm going through to try to disassemble the pen. So first off, I tried to get that nib out, but it's in there solid like it's glued. And that feed looks very, very similar to ebonite. It might in fact be ebonite. And I didn't want to risk cracking it because if it's glued in there, then there's no possibility of repairing the pen within its value, that's for sure. So I checked out the piston by moving the piston all the way up, and this is what happened here. It unscrewed. It hasn't got a flatted side on it there that you can put a wrench into, but if you just keep turning it this way, it unscrews in that direction. You can see that there is a tool that you can get that sits down inside those two little slots right there to unscrew that, but mine came out. So the difficulty would be is if yours is very, very stiff uh, and you exert too much force on that, this is all plastic. This is plastic. That center piece right there is plastic. This, what looks like metal, is not metal. It's plastic too, that little part there. And you can see that my piston has come undone. So I'll need to extract that. There we go. So there's the piston. It has a good amount of grease on it. So I don't think I need to re-grease it. But you can get into this pen to clean that barrel out. But you can't get the nib out. At least that's an easier way of cleaning it than having to pump it over and over again. That's what she said. I wouldn't try to take this piece here apart. Uh, but we'll see how easily it goes back together again. This doesn't look intuitive to me. And it just sits in that slot. Interesting. Turn it just a little bit to anchor the end. And hopefully that will be the right distance. These piston fillers can often be very, very temperamental. And some of them I've taken an hour with to try to get them adjusted properly. So I'm just going to try to hold on to this piece here and screw the barrel back the opposite way as tight as I can get it by hand because there's no tool available. That piece is plastic so I worry about even putting a wrench on that because a metal tool might damage that plastic. But I can get this edge of my spark plug gapping tool into that little slot and tighten it if need be. Let's see how tight I can get it by hand first. I worry that every time I try to use it it's going to loosen up. So I'm going to open it all the way up and see whether I can turn that a little bit more. Remember righty tighty lefty loosey. I'm going to try a little screwdriver instead. I'm just going to put it in that slot and see whether I can just turn it a little bit more. There. Got a couple more turns out of it. And I don't think I damaged it. There we go. So I'll see if I can ink this up. This is the new Gerbin Shogun ink that I just picked up. And it's a shimmering ink. Kind of a bronzy look. I'll dip the entire nib into the ink. Close the piston down. Drop back up. 
I'm going to do it once more. So I hear bubbles. And you can see that copper sheen on that Kleenex. Very nice. I doubt if I'll see any of that shimmer on my writing sample because this is a very fine nib. But we'll find out and on. Here is the Hongdian N6 piston filler with a Hongdian 6016, a Moonman P135, a Schaefer Icon, and a Wingsong 629 piston filler. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. I'm showing it with the Wingsung 629 for a couple of reasons. First, the Wingsung 629 is another Chinese cigar-shaped piston filler with a number six size nib. But also because the nib on the Wingsung 629, which is actually over here, is 14 karat gold and is the reason I was so anxious to get that steel extra fine nib off the N6. When I failed to get it out of the pen during that video disassembly, I resigned myself to the fact I'd have to write with this pen with the extra fine nib forever, which meant you know, the pen would go uninked or be sold. I even went online and tried to find another N6 with a fine nib. Perhaps the fine nib wouldn't be such a needle. There were a few, but I wasn't thrilled with having to pay for another one. So at the risk of breaking the pen before I was able to film the review, I redoubled my efforts and finally pulled the nib. Inquiring minds needed to know, after all. The ink probably lubricated it a little more and made it budge. Then I pulled the nib from the wing sung and it went into the N6 perfectly. I will show you writing samples from both nibs, but spoiler alert, I'm absolutely thrilled with the gold nib on this pen. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with those writing samples. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. I thought about pulling the Wingsung gold nib back out of this pen and replacing the original steel nib for the writing sample, and then pulling it again and swapping it for the gold nib for another writing sample. But I'm both lazy and trepidatious about doing the swap again. You see, I've got this pen writing so well right now, so gloriously, that I don't want to fuck it up for the writing sample. If you don't fuck up. However, I do have the original writing sample that I did when I inked the pen for the first time. And I actually filmed this. So I'll cut in that video right now. So this is how it's come out. It's skipping. But I'm going to give it a little bit of a push here. Very stiff nib. These are Doug's many steps to inky happiness. Pressing into the page. It's still skipping a bit. Very, very dry. I'm going to use a 003 inch or 0 0.076 millimeter uh, spark plug gapping tool to try to open this up a bit, even just to floss it a bit, because those tines are very, very tight. I think I'll just start by flossing it a bit. It certainly is extra fine, but it's not getting ink on the horizontal. It is getting ink on the vertical. So it's not good for fast writing, that's for sure. So I'm going to give this a little bit more work. Push it a little bit more here. It's certainly smooth in all directions for an extra fine nib. As long as they are for me to measure with to see what kind of line thickness we have. About a 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 millimeters, which is a Japanese extra fine or a Western extra, extra, extra fine or what they call a needle point. Yeah, I'm going to have to keep working with this. 004 and putting the tip of this in the breather hole 
and then just dragging it down. Don't want to misalign the tines because they're already pretty good. That's much better. Yeah, now we're getting somewhere. And that's improved it. I'm still getting a bit of skipping, but I'm going to let it run a little bit. I'm going to also run a little bit of ink. There's another little trick that Jack taught me. Just flood that feed and run a drop of ink out onto a tissue and let it flow through that nib. Waste a little bit and then back the piston off. Then I use the absolute thinnest one I've got, which is 0 0.002 inch, 0 0.05 one millimeters just to floss the nib to get any particles out of it because it looked like I was scratching some paper so let that ink flow and it's much better it's still extra fine certainly but it's flowing much better as you can see it wasn't great out of the box it was incredibly dry and skippy and created a line that was barely visible it was so thin so I worked on it. I did my seven strokes to inky happiness technique, which quickly turned into 24 strokes with no happiness in sight. The nib improved a little after I stroked it, as we all do. <laughs> then I flossed the nib with a spark plug gapping tool that was 0 0.004 inches or 0 0.102 millimeters in thickness. And that improved it a little bit more as well. So I began writing with the EF nib for a while and produced another writing sample showing how the treatment actually got the nib to a decent place. I was surprised from the beginning that although the nib was very dry, it was very smooth for such a fine nib. If you enjoy writing very, very small letters like this here, then you'll probably really like this nib. Now let's turn to the pen with the 14 karat gold number six size wing sung medium nib and why I'm now so in love with this pen. So this is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Hongdian N6 with a number six size, 14 karat gold, Wingsung 629 nib. Let's check the wetness. You can see it's nicely wet. The nib is very, very smooth and has a bit of bounce to it. It's not by any means a flex nib, but it is bouncy. I like the nib very much when I did the review of the Wingsung 629 piston filler but I wasn't that thrilled with the pen itself. The pen is okay, unposted, a little light, but okay. But I wish it just posted a little better and I would have continued to use it, but it's much too long uh, to write with posted, even if the nib was very, very nice. That's why I was anxious to have that gold nib in a pen I like. And the ink today, is a new ink for me from G. Urbain. It is G. Urbain Shogun. It is a lovely dark gray with a bronze copper-like shimmer. Here's a sample I did of the ink on some Tomoe River paper. Well, you can see that sheen, that shimmer uh, to it, especially on the letters. It's coming out for me on those letters. And here it is in comparison to the uh, J. Urbain Stormy Gray, uh, which has a gold shimmer to it. As to line variation, the gold nib actually does give you some line variation, but not much, as I showed up here. And the line it makes is 0 0.4 millimeters in thickness, which makes it a western extra fine or a Japanese fine and much more in the realm of usable for me and for our quote
and some reverse writing. Well, this has to be one of the smoothest nibs I've ever experienced in reverse. It's a lot drier, but not scratchy at all. And some quick writing. That feed keeping up very, very nicely with that medium nib. I'm not sure that I mentioned it, but it does have an M on it, on that 14 karat gold nib, and it is a medium, even though it's writing a 0.4 millimeter fine line. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? You probably already guessed that I'm thrilled with this pen. I ran through the gamut of emotions with this pen. I was disappointed, then surprised, then dejected, and then thrilled. I didn't expect I'd like the nib, but I was disappointed it didn't write well out of the box. Then I was surprised at how smooth the extra fine nib was once I got the ink flowing. Then I was dejected that I couldn't swap the nib. I was mostly dejected because I liked the pen itself so much. Then I was thrilled that not only did I finally get the nib out, but also the Wingsung 629 Gold Nib fits perfectly in this pen and makes it a real winner. I like that the pen posts so deeply and actually it improves the writing experience by posting the pen. It instantly reminded me of how wonderful Jack's Schaefer Legacy 2 fountain pen felt in my hand. Posted, it is well balanced with a nice amount of weight and it's compact. And I love the section. The section is very close to the size and shape of the Mont Blanc 146 Le Grand and is in that size sweet spot that I love for a section. I like the clip. I like the stylized symbols on the gold colored cap. I like the visual balance of the gold cap to the black body and then that gold piston knob at the end. I love the ink window. It's large and very practical. I love the ink capacity. And mostly, I love that that number six size nib is swappable. And what I don't love so much. Well, I'm concerned about the plastic parts that I see in the piston assembly. I'm hoping that I won't have to disassemble it to clean it too often. I'm not thrilled that it requires a special tool to unscrew the piston assembly. I'm just lucky, I guess, that it came loose so easily. Those plastic parts can get chewed up when you put metal tools on them. And I'm not thrilled with the nib choices. You have a choice of needlepoint and super fine needlepoint. They're not exactly in the ballpark of my favorite nib sizes. I'd love to see Hongdin come up with their own 14 karat gold medium nib for this pen. And I'm on the fence when it comes to whether that is an ebonite feed or not. It seems to be excellent for the flow of this pen. It is certainly looking like it is absorbing ink and it is providing some excellent flow to this very hungry, juicy Wingsung 14 karat gold nib. All in all, in its present form, I'm pretty sure this Hongdian Wingsung N629 will make my best of list for 2022 next Christmas. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And you can join as a member of my channel too for only 99 cents a month. I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis and badges. Plus, now I'm providing unboxing videos as I get new pens exclusively for members only. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.